this video we're going to discuss the differences between an original film and its remake. We thought a prime example of this would be The Wicker Man. The 1973 film The Wicker Man was produced with a small £500,000 budget and little to no marketing that still managed to impress critics and audiences alike. The Wicker Man was directed by Robin Hardy and based off of the 1967 novel Ritual. The film starred Edward Woodward, Britt Eklund, Diane Salento and Christopher Lee. And due to the small budget, Lee actually worked for free on the movie as a passion project. The film received negative feedback from the studio Lion Films, which did not have confidence in the film and decided to screen it in a double bill format. As a result, the film undergone extensive edits against Hardy's wishes, cutting the film down from 99 minutes to 87. The Wicker Man centres around the conflict between Christian and pagan ideology as one man searches for a missing girl. The clashing of Christian and pagan beliefs actually makes for a perfect thriller and the location also adds to the atmosphere of the film as the main character is completely isolated within the vast landscape and outnumbered by the pagans. Due to the genre, The Wicker Man was rated 15 and despite its lack of marketing, the film became popular with critics and audiences. This is probably due to its originality at the time, incorporating horror, sex, comedy, folk music and a tragic ending. The film also gained moderate publicity due to the studio's dismissal of the film, despite it actually being loved by critics. However, the budget set multiple constraints on the production. As the production was filmed in November but set in spring, they glued leaves and blossoms onto the bare trees. This posed an issue for the opening sequence which includes extreme wides and aerial shots. As a result, the opening sequence was shot in South Africa as they couldn't glue blossoms to that many trees. The film only grossed £58,341 probably due to the studio's dismissal of the film and their reluctance to market it. And while it was a financial flop, its praise from critics and audiences alike have cemented it as a cult classic among thriller fans. The Wicker Man explores the conflict between Christianity and paganism, which was relevant at the time of the film's release, as during the 60s, with more people emigrating to England, its strictly Christian society had to make place for the other religions and cultures. You could also draw parallels between the message of this film and the events of the Olympic massacre in Munich the year before, and the story of following a religion with such violent passion that you're willing to sacrifice human lives. But because of this barbaric ideology, Howie underestimates them as just simple heathens and unwittingly walks into their wicker trap. Easy, You've been turned off and enough. He's not, he's not. I know. He's I know. All right then, anybody. Simple. The phallic symbol. That is correct. It is the image of the penis, which is venerated in religions such as ours, as symbolizing the generative force in nature. Following the success of the 1973 film with its original premise and the eclectic mixture of themes and symbolism, Universal Pictures had been considering a remake of the film since the 90s. However, nothing would come of this until 2002, when it was announced that a remake script was being written for Universal and Saturn Films, which is Nicolas Cage's production company. However, later the rights were sold to Millennium Films and filming began in 2005 and in 2006, an unintentional masterpiece was born. And with that, let's examine the 2006 cult classic, The Wicker Man, to identify the differences within this production and the original, and to maybe even discover what went wrong. The 2006 Wicker Man was written and directed by Neil LeBute and, as already mentioned, produced by Saturn Films. Cage also had a particular interest in the project, stating, I think it's a homage. It's a way of us saying this is a wonderful film. The film was released without preview screenings for critics, creating a sort of mystery around the film's release. And much like the original, the film's mystery shows a lack of confidence in the film from the studio. While the original has a clear set genre that is portrayed through the tone of the film and the themes explored within it, the remake seems to try to be a thriller horror film but lacks all tension and intrigue due to the writing and Cage's over-the-top performance. What's even more unclear is who the film is actually for. The film definitely reflects a common theme of taking British pieces of popular media and trying to recreate their appeal to American audiences, which can be seen in the location change from the UK to the US and in the change of name from Summer Isle to Summer's Isle, which was thought to be easier for Americans to pronounce. The film also decided to opt for a lower age rating than the original, 
Dropping from the original 15 to PG-13, it is clear they wanted the film to be as widely accessible to their American audience as possible. However, in doing this, they limited the chilling or disturbing content that could be shown on screen and so ultimately they missed out a wider audience of horror lovers who expect a more mature film. Both films failed to make back their budget at the box office, with the 2006 Wickerman making back $38.8 million out of its $40 million budget. Like the original, the 2006 remake is also considered a cult classic as a film that people love to hate. The remake omits all religious subtext and instead opts for a conflict in the form of malice versus the matriarchy on the island. This could be due to religious extremists being a touchy subject in America and studios are often reluctant to make controversial films that would jeopardise profits. But the lack of religious themes in the film makes the plot kind of crumble. Malice isn't a virgin sacrifice and because the islanders are not testing his faith, they have no reason to send him on a two-hour goose chase. They should just kill him or capture him as soon as he arrives or just kill one of the other men on the island. By not trying to offend audiences, their plot becomes meaningless. I believe that the 1976 original take on the story was brilliant and it's up there with the classics. The way the story is told throughout is really well portrayed. I think this because after watching the 2006 remake with Nicolas Cage starring in the lead role, I personally found the story hard to understand. It went from the next scene with random dreams and it was hard to grasp what was real or what was actually happening. It just muddled the story for me really. I agree with people that it's a mess. The only reason I enjoyed the remake is that Nicolas Cage continuously makes a fool of himself by going round like a drunk local and continues to vigorously yell at people. <laughs> Why did you say it like that? I thought it sounded better. <laughs> okay. Is hers? Tell me! I, yes, I, I think it's, yeah. How to get burned? How to get burned? I, How to get burned? How to get burned? I don't know! I personally love both films. I think the original was daring and risky for the time, and it really showed what you could do with a small budget and enough determination and passion from the people involved. The Wicker Man definitely still holds up today, and its cult classic status was well deserved in my opinion. I am also personally a lover of terrible movies, and so for me, the 2006 Wicker Man remake was a well-deserved cult classic. The dialogue is ridiculous, the acting is an over-the-top mess, the plot makes little to no sense, and Nicolas Cage punches a woman in a bar suit. It has everything I need in a terrible movie, and it's up there with classics like The Room for me. Ah! What? Ah! What is it? What is it? What is it? What is that? What is it? Oh no, no, not the beast! Not the beast! Ah! I'm living by 